So, today I want to talk about the existence of Allah using a method we can call soul searching questions, reflection, pondering. So, I want to, you to ask yourself that what you see before you is this beauty that you see before you random? Or is there, is this, can beauty be random? Ask yourself this question. So, You know one thing about nature is that everything you see here, all the trees, all the water, all the clouds, not only they're beautiful, but every single thing you see is functional. Not only everything is beautiful and functional, but it is multifunctional, meaning everything that you see plays multiple roles, meaning the clouds, they bring rain, but the clouds are part of a process to move and purify water. The clouds also create beauty. The clouds also create shade from the sun. The clouds, they play a multiple functional role. The water, the trees, they all play multiple functional role. It's not just something beautiful, right? It's also serving other animals, uh, serving other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nature also serves to show the role of morality. For example, 
running water is pure. And that tells us something about ourselves. Water tells us something about ourselves. The trees tells us something about ourselves. So the, so the inner world and the outer world, the way that they're linked, is it just haphazard? Part of what nature does is to show us the awesomeness of the Creator compared to us. We're like little teeny-weeny atoms of ants compared to these gigantic trees and gigantic mountains and this earth that we live in as if we own it. Like, look at this human being here and look at the creation that is benefiting this little midget human being. All the trees that benefit, all the water that benefits, all the beauty that's created. It's to show how small man is in comparison to nature. Yet, And yet nature, even though it's serving man, it's also telling man that you have to stay within your limits. And water is used for what? Traveling. More than a hundred thousand commercial boats working around the waters of the world. You know, and so you have these waters that are pathways. Nature made these natural pathways. And just as there are beings that live on the land, there are beings that live in the ocean, and there are beings that live in the air. Right? Look at this. All working together. Is this random? These animals working with intelligence. Trees working with intelligence, human beings working with intelligence, yet the claim is the one who made all this, or all of this was made without intelligence. That makes no sense. And even though the mountains everywhere are the same, I mean, they're mountains, but yet everywhere it's different. Just like every snowflake is different. No fingerprint is the same, no mountain is the same, yet they're the same. Something special about each place, you know, should make us realize the awesomeness of the one who made this. And all he's asking is you admit that he made this, surrender to the fact that he made this. That's all he's saying. La ilaha illallah. And look at man. Man will make what he needs to make at every part of the world.
you know, as you come down this mountain, I want you to think about, like, as the view comes down this mountain, I want you to think about how every animal has its own, like, existence and consciousness, right? Imagine a bird going down this mountain, right? Like, just like this, as a bird's flying down. And he's seeing a different world, and you're seeing a different world. Just the fact that water is running and stays pure and there's a system to keep water pure and there is a system to get water everywhere via clouds and the water cycle. It's just amazing. And how beautiful it looks. It's just amazing. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. You know, when you look at the scenery, right? Not only is it bringing morality to human beings and showing the awesomeness of the Creator and the humbleness the created should have, but it's also serving man. And so the, to the, the, the earth isn't so hard you can't grow things on it. And it's not so uh, hard you can't make roads on it. It's not so soft you sink in it like you would in some of the other planets. I want us to ask a question that why throughout history and civilizations and cultures that by looking at nature, one wants to seek the divine. Like, why does that happen to human beings? Even this process of pollination, birds and bees, insects going from one flower to the other flower that gives us our fruits, this process, the waterfall is a process, you know. One of the points the Qur'an makes is that look at this stable mountain and yet it will be dissolved in the Day of Judgment, right? The, everything that you found to be so stable and strong is one day going to come to an end and you're going to end up in a different world. Did you ever look at the leaves? 
Allah says in Quran, there's no leaf that doesn't fall except Allah knows of it. So the one who created all this, he knows even of the leaf. So like I was saying that nature teaches morality. So for example, look here. You have trees with leaves, there's life, and then trees leave, leave the leaves, they drop from the trees, and there's the, the life that was in the tree in terms of leaves and fruits comes to an end. And showing us the cycle of process of life, and life comes back, and then he dies again. Ice. One of the things I find very fascinating about how water makes a reflection of nature itself, you know, there was this uh, painting com uh, competition where one group was making a, a picture and the other, there was a curtain in the middle and the other side was making a picture. So one side made the picture, whatever it was, and when they removed the curtain, the, they had made a mirror so that that mirror reflected what was made by the first group. So it's like the water does the same thing. Allah You know, everything is provided for you. Water, food, exercise, good weather, good sunlight. Everything is provided for you. It's like living in a hotel and the cleaner comes and cleans up the hotel, puts in the soaps back where they're supposed to be, right? Uh, brings new towels. And you're like, oh no, no one's, this is just happening automatically. How is this all happening automatically? How is this process all automatic? And what's interesting is sometimes human beings can do something with nature that enhances the natural relationship between men and nature.
And look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates animals that are perfect for their the the terrestrial tr the train that they live in. Right? They're goats and animals that live on mountains where if we were to live there we would slip and fall. But they don't slip and fall. Now notice here how water is stored between the hard rocks so animals can come and drink from it. The fact that clouds are white and white signifies a type of purity and it carries water there's a scholar of islam he wrote about the greatness of the black color in nature and because of that the greatness of black people when someone makes you capable of seeing some something beautiful or someone shows you something beautiful like this they're giving you a message look at that that's a message this beauty this beautiful tree the Sun it's a message, but it's also telling you the leaves are yellow and they're falling. It's time to go. The time to go is coming soon. You know, this is the type of scenery the companions of the Prophet and early Muslims saw every day. They were always in nature. This is how Mecca would have been if it was left just natural without the stupid tall buildings. This is what children need to see.
before the industrial age and before the industrial revolution, this is what man lived in, nature. Notice how the water also has different colors based upon what's under the ground. If it's muddy, it looks brown. If it's jaded, it looks green. There's nothing to say, because an nature answers the questions, if you reflect on it, if you ponder upon it.
You know, even the fact that ta- nature created time so that man can do what man needs to do, so man can function as human beings can function as human beings. So they have a sense of time. Man needs a sense of time. The very fact that we need a sense of time that's an internal thing and that we have an, in, an external ways of having that time through nature is itself not only beautiful, but it shows how deep the link is between the psyche of human beings and nature. You know? And so when Allah says, remember Allah in the morning and the evenings, right? So this sense of time and how it relates to like this is not this is not an accident this is this is superbly fabulously beautifully well designed by the greatest designer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So let me know if this was beneficial because I'd like to do videos like this on many different subjects on animals and insects and space, so on and so forth.